Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. You know, your family is your team. You want to work. I, I always believe that home office is all about the whole family working on your website. You know, you build a website and, and you can build several different websites too because each person might have a different interest, you know, and but build uh, several different websites and you it work as, together as a family and you kind of build a business. It's a business. That's what I want this to do is be a business that is profitable. And it's like, remember the ancient uh, art of, from the, you know, when the archaeologists dig up the ancient graves and stuff like that and there's this gold and it's got these beautiful intricate patterns carved in it and it, and it's just beautiful and and so and i'm one you know how the, you know the this patience and skill that it takes to build something like that to create something like that and what i'm encouraging people to do is to do the same thing only with websites this is the you know age of information you know and so use this technology learn how to use this technology and use it to build a free enterprise for your family and uh, whatever your art is you know you create your own entertaining education online you know your own channel of entertaining education and uh, make it beautiful you know, use these tools to make something really beautiful. Learn how to operate your computer and, you know, and it's almost kind of like a band. Another little analogy you could use is a, a, a musical band, you know, where you got so one person plays the guitar, one person plays the keyboards, another the drums and so on and singer and, you know, and that's and build yourself a business. and make something it's got to be valuable the most important thing is is what you're building and offering needs to be valuable for other people you know and so make sure that whatever you're doing be realistic and be prolific you know produce a lot of whatever it is you pr you're offering produce a lot of it and make sure it's really good and clean and neat and beautiful and valuable and you know, and keep, uh, then you got to work on your schedule, you know, productivity. How are you, you know, you got to work on uh, making your website. Then you got to work on creating content for your website. I, I like the whole content traffic. You got to attract traffic to your website. And then you got to attract, uh, you know, after you get traffic, you got to pre-sell. You got to, you know, put the your marketing how are you gonna what are you gonna market what are you gonna sell and how are you gonna sell it and how are you gonna present it and make your stuff attractive to the your audience you know and you attract an audience and you keep developing your little holistic home office product you know whatever it is your your style is because everybody's gonna have their own style and their own interests and you know and, I, and that's what you do with your website you, you write your plan and you follow that plan and you develop and get really good at producing content and produce a lot of content and um, get that uh, workflow going and so that you're doing it and day after day and week after week and then if you got to work on a full-time job you know uh, then that's going to slow you down. You're going to have to spend more time working at your job than you, and you're only going to be able to work on your business part time. And that's, uh, you know, that's life. You know, I mean, you got to pay your bills and it's better to earn the money to pay your bills than it is to run around trying to get somebody else to pay for your bills. And, you know, so be productive in life and be productive and produce something valuable, produce something beautiful and valuable and trade that in this global cloud of artificial intelligence and keep learning and keep 
producing more product, more valuable information. You got to be a teacher, you know, teach people something valuable, something inter entertaining and educational, interesting. And uh, just keep on working, keep working, no, no matter what, don't get, don't ever stop, just keep working. You know, sometimes your stories are not going to be very good and you'll, you know, not use them or whatever. But keep working. Don't give up. Just keep working and producing new content. And, you know, uh, edit and polish your stories, both within the stories and also each, you know, all the stories together, you know, because your website has many different stories. And you want to, all your stories, each one of those stories, you want to be very smooth flowing, you know, interesting, beautiful, entertaining education. That's what your whole, that's what you're producing. You know, your main product is entertaining education. And so you keep producing stories and each one of those individual stories has to be, you know, done very well. Produce a very a nice story that's readable, makes sense, um, that's valuable. And then, uh, so you got the, your, and then also you got to arrange the stories. Like I have my stories arranged into the categories, you know, business, computer, website, artisan, and space, which is the spiritual part of self improvement is what that's all about. There's a book in there. I wrote a whole entire book. My first book called uh, Homo Speece Hypothesis is all about my perspective of everything. You know, the Big Bang, you know, the universe, everything. Life, how life evolved on Earth, how, how human, the human kingdom of life diverged from the animal kingdom of life and civilization begins and Adam and Noah and all this and and how it all evolved, you know, my the and how we got to now, which is this one world civilization, which is a good thing. We need those big businesses for you know there's nothing wrong with big business, but it does need to be run holistically, you know, and spiritually spiritually inspired big business and and uh, but a lot, probably a majority of the people of Earth will earn a living working in their own home office biggest cottage industry. And that's what I'm trying to help as many people as I can get started. You know, most people are, you know, probably, probably most people will work in a big corporation, you know, get a job working in a small business or a big business. But many people will want to start their own home office based cottage industry and that's what holistic home office is all about thanks a lot and thanks for watching explore the stories read each story watch the videos they all kind of go together and they're kind of the the writing style is not very pro, you know professional but the information contained in these stories is very valuable information Basically, here's my laptop. I got right now. I got simple screen recording uh, work working, and uh, you know, here's my panel and my four little workstations. I'm on right now. I'm on workstation number three, and I can switch. I can use Control F1 to switch to the number the number one, which is where I have my browser open. I use Dissenter and DuckDuckGo, you know, I'm sure they're not perfectly, you know, private, but they're better than Google and, you know, Firefox and all that there, because when Firefox, when uh, uh, Mozilla announced that they were going to start uh, uh, censoring their search results, you know, I switched, I, you know, because I've been using Firefox ever since I started using uh, Linux back in about 2004. So, and but I, after they said that, I just okay. That's I'll have to get a different one. And this is the best one I found so far. It's working pretty good. I you know, I don't know if it's got the the development 
part of it very well organized, but we'll see. Anyway, I don't really use that anyway. I, I mostly just use the browser for surfing the web because I'm mostly I'm just a storyteller. I like to tell stories about different things, you know. And so here's my storytelling website. You know, I got a whole bunch of it's it's this is the way you build websites. You know, you want to have your you got to have all kinds of disclaimers and your contact info. I got a bunch of additional links to other websites that I like. You know, and uh, here's a little co copy of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution about free speech. And here's my link to my book that's for sale. And be grateful for anybody that buys that book and reads it. I, you know, it's 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 the book is. Uh, I took a whole bunch of the website stories and made it into a book. So it's very similar to the website. The website's got a lot more information because I've been adding to it ever, you know, and you know, the book is different, it's, but it's the same subject. If, if you think that uh, providing, a, you know, this kind of education to people that are struggling to survive, you know, because my kind of target market really is working class, poor, you know, poor, working poor people who are struggling to prosper. You know, I always figured if you want to solve the income inequality problem, the best way to do that is to teach poor people how to make money. And that's one of the, what I'm trying to do here. You know, that's part of it, at least part of what I'm trying to do here. You know, and so if you think that's a good idea, then, you know, the, the one bad thing about doing that is poor people don't have a lot of money to spend. So if, if you think that's a good idea, please donate, you know, because I... You know, like I said, I spend most of my time working at my day job, you know, which, you know, job means just over broke. That's not the best way to make money, but I got to pay my bills and I believe working is better than not working and paying my own bills is better than having somebody else do it. So, you know, I got the, the, the website organized, you know, into kind of a three tier structure. Here's the main tier. You know, first of all, there's a blog. And if, you know, if I knew what I knew now, I would have done this a lot different. I would have put all this on, on one website and put this on like a subdomain, put the blog on the subdomain of the website. But I got, you know, I, this is the way I set it up and I don't know how to change it. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And here's the first tier of the website. You know, here's the blog, which is home you click on home to get to the blog and uh, and it's just stories I post and uh, about what I, what's you know what I'm thinking about that day and there's a bunch of stuff under it that are just little stories about me and about the website and about like if anybody's interested in helping build this website or this business, I'm open to suggestions about how to do that, you know. I mean, I'm kind of a, I like doing things my way, but, you know, just, I'm open to suggestions. And then there's business, you know, I, I, I do want kind of like-minded. I, I don't mind people that have in different perspectives, but I, I don't want this to be an argument and, or anything like that. It's just kind of keep it all, you know. I'm kind of a, globalist and a nationalist. I'm a nationalist and a globalist. You know, I'm a patriot. I love the United States. It's my favorite nation. But I'm also a globalist. And I, I believe one world unity is a good idea. And we all, everybody needs to work on that and try to achieve that in our society today. The business section is, you know, some stories. I'm not all that smart of a business person. Uh, if I was, I wouldn't have to have my day job but anyway I'm working on it and uh, you know and I just write a bunch of stuff I this part right here business plan I kind of looked that up on uh, uh, what is that uh, the small business administration website and I did a read their documentation about writing a business plan and I you know that's where I got a lot of this information knowledge I, I've studied business a lot I, I read uh, 
a lot of Robert Kiyosaki's writings and, uh, you know, other people like Bill Gates and different people I've studied business, read several, you know, books about business. And so, and then I got the business, you know, financial. One of the things I, I believe the big, big important uh, applications that you need to learn how to use is a spreadsheet and make your spreadsheets and uh, create documentation for your business and keep track, you know, keep a good, you know, well-organized uh, documentation for your business. And then there's some stories about, you know, philosophy about, you know, what the benefits of private property, how to trade, you know, making good deals and stuff like that. And blockchain, I don't know very much about blockchain, but I'd like to learn more and, you know, improve this story. All these stories, you know, are, they're, I, I, I edit and polish them over and over again, and they, they just kind of evolve and get bigger and better. Affiliate marketing, which is one of the things I'm doing here. I also like network marketing. Here's my affiliate marketing links. You know, if you click on one of these and buy something, I get a small commission for that. You know, and it's just, I, these are just almost the main purpose of these links right now is, is they kind of make the website look a little more colorful. You know, it's like something. I, I wish people would buy things, but the main thing I wish people would buy is the book, Holistic Home Office, the book. You know, and here's some st more stuff about economics and, you know, kind of the, co the context in which you're building your holistic home office because there's a lot of very interesting things going on. I mean, where the human race is booming, man, the, the thriving. The, everybody's like complaining and, oh, it's terrible, you know, and I'm going, like, what, what are you talking about? We live in the richest, the greatest civilization in human history. The United Nations, it's, it's like, you know, what are you complaining about, man? Just get to work and start building something and being productive. Then you'll have plenty of, re, you know, re, you know uh, income. You know, you got to, you know, you got to make money. money. Making money is not the most important part of life. In fact, you know, it's just kind of like eating. Eating is not the purpose of life on earth. But you have to eat to live on earth, you know, and so, and it's the same thing with business. It's not the most important part of life on earth, but you have to be productive to, to live on earth and be happy and healthy and wealthy, you know. Even if you inherit millions of dollars, you have to be productive, you know, or you're handicapped, you know. We got to find a way for handicapped people to be productive because being productive is a part of being healthy, it's natural. The computer, this is kind of my, the whole holistic home office, this is like the, one of the main sections. And these stories are kind of not very, they're not all that great, you know. I need to, I want to work on them. I wish I had the time to improve, write, keep working on these stories because none of them are finished. And, uh, but I like Linux. I've been using Linux since about 2004. And, uh, you know, so I hear, you know, I'm going to, I want to write stories about, you know, binary and, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, machine language. There's binary and then there's, uh, there's another language kind of intermediate between C and binary. And then there's C++, which is what, KDE is written in, and since I'm using KDE, and I like KDE because it's really easy for people to get started using. It's got graphical, it uses graphical tools, and then Qt, you know, is the main, Qt is kind of part of KDE, or KDE is part of Qt. They're kind of related. Qt is, is a private business, but... Uh, and KDE is kind of the free, and it's kind of like uh, uh, Fedora, you know, KDE is like Fedora compared to Red Hat Linux. Red Hat is the company, and Fedora is a free and open source version of their their software. 
and KDE is like the free and open source version of Qt. And then Python, I, I don't, you know, I've read uh, several books about Python and I'm, I've studied it. I don't really, I don't, I don't know how to program in any language, but I want to learn how to do it. And Python, I, I kind of thought I would like to build Python websites instead of PHP websites. PHP is the most popular, it's, you know, it's what WordPress is written in. And so, and SQL is a, the, the, database you know because you got to have a database and I'm, I'm studying I was studying uh, KDE's a Kanadi system you know for the way they organize the information for um, contact which is the email application for uh, KDE you know and it has all the calendar and all that kind of personal information management it uses this program called a Kanadi and then behind a Kanadi is a database. And so learning how to do that and manage all you all, you got your customers, you got your family and friends, you got all the, a whole bunch of different kinds of people that you want to be, keep, you know, and your calendar, you know, and try to start setting up your calendar to, you know, manage your time and stuff like that. So learning how this works is important. You know your products. What what products are you selling? What everything you wanted to learn how to build a database. I figure start with building. Uh, I think the best one to use is uh, Caligra Sheets. You know to build a to start keeping track of your records. You know and you learn how to build this and you build sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and you can. can connect them all together to keep track of your uh, business you know keep you start keeping records as soon as possible get learn how to use that tool and uh, and then later on you'll you'll start using uh, SQL Postgres SQL is the most advanced relational database that's the one I want to I've been studying and trying to learn I've been studying all these subjects part, part of my problem is, is I'm studying all these at the same time so I don't learn any of them very you know well but you know whatever this one right here installing Linux when I install Linux this is where I go because I got everything written down and I can follow Linux. I can follow this process. It reminds me of each step, you know, you know, because you, there's certain things you got to do, and a lot of it I don't really re need to necessarily read about. But like this part right here, you know, uh, this reminds me. Okay, yeah, this command, and you can copy and paste these if you want, and just into your your uh, terminal, and just follow the process. And um, get get Linux installed. It's not that hard to do. The hardest part of getting Linux installed is getting your computer prepared. You got to get into the uh, the uh, you know the BIOS of your computer and you know and make it so that you can install Linux. You know because normally it won't allow you to do that. You know, and then there's your desktop, which is KDE. I like KDE because it's it's got a it's designed to be easy to use. It's it looks a lot like Windows, but the m main point is it's easy to use. There's buttons that you can push that you know you can go. Oh, what does this button do? You know, you can find your way around in Linux. Other ones don't are not like that they 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 it's like gnome which is kind of like the other the american you know because kde is kind of a european style of you know it comes out of europe europe it's where that comes from gnome is the american style it comes out of the boston sh shop and you know the mit and stuff like that and Silicon Valley and it's the difference in style is KDE is like a whole set 
of tools that work together, you know, and you use that whole set. And, and Gnome is, their philosophy is, you know, focus on one thing and do it really well. And, and they do, and, and it, make, it makes some really good applications, you know, like a browser or, uh, you know, uh, Inkscape or, you know, any kind of application, you know, they can make, you know, the people that do it are just, they focus on that one thing and they get really good at it. And that's a good way to go, you know. But I, I kind of tend to like this tool, the sets of tools, and so I like KDE. The main reason I like KDE, though, isn't that. It's, it's not the set. It's the making it easy to use for people like me who are not trained computer programmers. I didn't go to school and learn how to do... I went to some school, but I never didn't finish, and so I, I, did, I don't know how to program. I don't know... I'm getting there. I'm learning. I've been reading a lot of books about how to be a programmer, but and so you learn how to do that stuff like this, and you practice and get good at it. But I like KDE because it's easy. You can start using it, and it's not like you're, you know, it's just easy to use. You know, and so that's what I do. And I use KDE, all these little applications, and then your terminal, Z shell, you know, that's a whole nother thing. This is how, once you, when you first start, you use your desktop, KDE Plasma, and all these uh, visual, these, uh, you know, uh, what do they call that? You know, applications, you know. What do they call those? Anyway, they're applications, you know, they're, they're graphical applications, you know, like a, you got a, kind of like the browser that I'm looking at right now. That's an application. Okay, and you can edit it and do all kinds of different things to that. You know, your Plasma, KDE Plasma is the KDE desktop. Kate is your text editor. I've been using Crusader is my file management tool and then office productivity is about you know using uh, Caligra and uh, you know and Caligra sheets and learning how to use those tools your term now after you learn how to use Linux by using these tools which is these graphical tools that kind of you get in the learn how to use Linux by just using them for years, you know, because you learn how to get familiar with Linux. Then you kind of, while you're doing that, you're learning this, you're practicing this, and you're using it a little bit and a little bit. You get, I changed, I, when I first started using Linux, you know, Z Shell, they said Z Shell was just a little bit better than Bash, which Bash is the default uh, shell for Linux and so I switch I switched to Z shell and I've been using Z shell ever since. That's the one I'm familiar with. It's not you know, it's pretty simple to change that. It takes a little while but you know it's okay. And then Vim is this really you know it's a it's a text editor that it's kinda of like VS code, but it's really like it was like the original one that was made back in the 1960s at the same time that uh, um, Unix and uh, C were printed. Vim was the primary, and that was the main tool that people used to write programs. And it's still like one of the best, you know, fastest text editors in uh, computer science. Git is a program you use, to, you can use it to record all your everything you do and back up your you kind of keep a old copy of everything you're doing and so if you mess something up you can go back to an old thing and the main thing benefit of it is you can have a central repository a git repository and on a server that anybody can log into and work on they can check out the program and edit it and change it and then merge it back into your main branch 
you know, and uh, so you can have more than one person working on the same program and they don't interfere with each other. SSH is how you, you communicate with your website, your remote servers, all your different servers. Cause, and you can have all your, you can talk to, you can operate any computer from any computer using SSH. SSH. The containerization is, uh, you know, they have the commercial version is, you know, using Docker and there's a program you can install on your computer. And I haven't installed on my computers that, that you can actually run a whole entire operating system within it. And um, that's, there's two, so you got that, that's called virtualization. And then containerization is just kind of keeping all the programs that run on your computer isolated from your computer so they don't interfere, you know, they can't uh, damage your computer. And it, with Linux, Kimu, which is spelled with a Q-E-M-U, is the main containerization. And that's actually the virtualization program. The containerization program is called LXC. LXC is your containerization. You make containers for whatever you need a container for. And, um, you know, that's an important part of computer science, you know. And then your integrated development environment is how you would set up how to work, how to set up your computer to program, write po Python programs or C++ programs, whatever it is you're going to be. You know, and you got to use your containerization, use LXC and D to build your programs and keep them in a container so they don't cause any harm. Because a lot of times you, your programs are going to have different programs. Once you build a computer, you're going to, or a program, you're going to use a certain database, for example. And um, that database is going to be part of that program. And then later on you're going to build another program and with a database and you may use the same database the problem is it's going to be a later version of the database so you want to keep those two programs separately because they're running different versions of python or sql or whatever you know because you know that's just what you got to do and so you keep them contained you know, and then, you know, and that's your, your integrated development environment. You set the, all that up, local development. Local development involves where you can actually build your website on your computer. And you're building the website and you can actually see the website in your browser on your computer. It's not on the Internet. It's just on your computer. And you build and you build the website and then you use SSH to push it to the live website. And that's, uh, you know, that's another little thing you can do. You know, that's what, uh, that's all about your dev tools. It's just the tools like, uh, the two I recommend are KDevelop and Qt Creator. Learning how to use those tools, because those are good, that, those are, and these stories are not fully complete, they're just, starting out and right now I'm just kind of you know telling people you know do your research read the read the manual on all of them you know the website you know these here's a whole nother set of languages that you use for building websites you know and there's it's a whole nother kind of you know working on Linux is one thing and then working on websites is a whole nother thing and there's a lot of different things, content management systems using these. This is my, this is kind of some stories about this website, you know, and I'm just writing stories. What I would like, like I said, I would like to get to where I have some really good documentation about these. Uh, you know, I don't know how, you know, they're not really all that great at this point. I would like to be able, like people to be able to come on here and read some and learn how to build WordPress. I need time to write, you know, right now, I'm, like I said, I barely, 
I've got a couple of days a week that I can work on this. And I work on it during the week too, but it's like, it's hard to get a lot of work done when you're working at a job. Here is you're using the tools, you know, and being an artist, you know, writing, you know, and this is just about writing, you know, which doesn't have anything to do with computers necessarily. This, this one does, this is a computer program that you can use on Linux. You can use it on anything actually, you know, to create books. It's free and open source software, you know, application that you can use to, you know, publish. It's self-publishing software. You know, and these are some other stories about, just about writing. I got a camera and so I want to write a bunch of stories about that. And I, I have already started, but like I said, they're, they're still not very fancy. My picks, I got a, my picks, is just a bunch of you know, photographs I've taken in around this neighborhood where I live, and it's funny. You know, and I'd like to get a bigger gallery. I think I'll produce a bigger, you know, make a big gallery of photographs. You know, and then digital art using Krita and Inkscape and GIMP. I'll probably add an, and one for GIMP and you know, and other you know, free and open source digital arts too. So, you know, another one you've got over here. These are tools like Digicam and Darktable and Raw Therapy, and GIMP, my picks. You know, GIMP, you know, this is photography stuff right here. You know, this is a, a photo manager and these are photo editors dark tables kind of a you know a combination of a photo manager and editor so you know and then gimp is a kind of like a photo editor another big digital artist krita is a painting tool and inkscape is a drawing tool drawing, you know, because you, you, uh, Inkscape is using lines and shapes, you know, to build, to, to create images. Krita is using colors and, you know, and that's not, it's a different style, of, you know, so these two tools are good for making things. And then there's the making videos, which is what I'm doing now, and KDN Live, I put one because I'm, I'll probably write a lot of stories about that, or I, maybe I'll just change it. And here we go with some species about, you know, human nature and civilization and family values and, you know, you know recovery, self-improvement, holistic health, you know, it's about not, you know, taking care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. That's the holistic part of holistic home office, you know, and society and civilization, how to build a sustainable civilization. And homo species, uh, and it's a epic story about human nature and civilization. Free and open source education. I think that, uh, for one thing, I believe that uh, the truth is free and open source. It's always free and open source. You know, and this whole, you know, I believe people should be able to get paid for their ideas, but this way, this idea, the intellectual property, you know, there's gotta be a healthy medium, not the way it is now, it's not right, where people can have to keep, keep getting paid over and over again for the same thing, you know. Um, I think that uh, the schools, one, for one thing, you should respect your ancestors. Anybody disrespecting people's ancestors is a disrespectful person. And we see, you know, and what's going on right now, what I see in around the public schools now is totally disrespecting the ancestors, our ancestors. I love my ancestors. You know, I love the Angles and Saxons and Celtic Vikings. You know, those are my ancestors and I love and respect them. And this attack against my ancestors is an attack against me. 
And uh, I, you know, the state, you know, the United States needs to start standing up to these bullies and doing something about it because they're terrorizing America and we need to stop that. One of the things, you know, we got to, this started in schools, I, I believe, you know, the, they, the schools have been teaching this idea that our ancestors were these evil racist monsters, which they weren't perfect, you know, like we're not perfect either, you know. And but thanks to our ancestors, we've made a tremendous amount of progress. You know, when when the American Revolution happened, the the whole world was ruled by kings, and now most of the world is ruled by democracy. And back then, slavery was normal. Every society had slavery. You know, now very few do. You know, slavery is still going on, but it's rare and it's not legal. You know, back then it was legal. And so this idea that those people, our ancestors were these mean evil people is absurd. They're the ones that got rid of slavery and uh, racism. And they fought to get rid of it. They had to fight to get rid of it. It wasn't easy. You know, because those are habits that have been around for thousands and thousands of years. You know? Slavery was a part of human civilization since, at least since the Egyptians, you know. But anyway, sl slavery is evil, it's wrong. Racism is evil and wrong, and we need to stop, you know, keep not doing either one of those and make progress and provide equal opportunities for everyone. Not everyone is equal. Different people have different talents and interests. And the rewards are not going to be perfectly equal. That, that you know, that's just natural. You know, and the people, the more productive people, are going to be rewarded more. And that's the way it should be. You know, the 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 rewards should be a medium between uh, merit based, totally merit based. But there also needs to be a system. You know, like I believe in that. Uh, Progressive taxation is a good idea. You know, the more money you make, the more percent of taxes you should pay. I also believe that, uh, you know, there needs to be, like, a, if, if you make less than a certain amount of money, you just automatically get enough money to make that up. You know, no, there's going to be no poor people anywhere in the world. And there, the, that, that minimum wage would be more than it costs to live, you know, in whatever country you live in. You know, that's another thing. Loyalty to the country that you live in is important. And it's a one of the rules, you know, the divine rules of law. You know, you, you should be loyal to the country you live in. And um, the whole idea about between communism and capitalism, you know, to tell you, if you really want to know the truth, capitalism and communism both have good and bad features. You know, capitalism is the most successful. It's the, it produces the most prosperity for the most people. And there's not even, it's not, there's not even any near the second place, you know. And, but capitalism, so that private property and free enterprise are good ideas and we need to protect them and nurture them and, you know, cultivate them, you know, in, in a way that is fair and just, you know, capitalism depends on religion, you know, the, the, it's, capitalism is not a moral system. It's an economic system and it requires pe the people that do it to be moral people that, you know, get their morals from somewhere, you know, God, they get their morals from God and religion. And, um, you know, you know that democracy and capitalism were made by religious people for religious people. And they don't work without the religion, you know, they, as we can see in our society today. Mob rules is a horrible nightmare, you know, cr corrupt nightmare is what that is. And that's what we have right now is mob rules. And these mobs are running around terrorizing the people of Earth. And the state needs to stop it. The state needs to do something to stop it. You know, that's their job. You know. And there needs to be 
another law there needs to be is the, the politicians must be forced to follow the rules that they pass for everybody else. This idea that they can just get away with whatever they want to, that's not going to work. And you know, we need to fix that. And I, I kind of think there should be term limits because eh, I'm not going to say that. But, you know, this, I, these people get a job working for the government when they're 20-something. And they work there their whole life, and they have no idea what you know how to run a business or do anything like that, and and yet they want to tell the people that do know how to run a business how to do it, and so it's a good idea for people to, you know, citizens, you know, that are, you know, free enterprise capitalism, you know, we don't want the state controlling everything and running everything. We want the state to make sure, enforce the rule of law, and that's what their job is. If they would just do that one thing, the people can take care of ourselves. We can take care of ourselves. We don't need the state to take care of us. You know, we just need the state to make to enforce the rule of law, whatever that is. And, uh, you know, and the rule of law needs to be, you know, not mob rules. You know, it needs to be, for one thing, it needs to be, from God, God is the source of the rule of law, and you know, and that's just the way you do it. And you know, I, I just I don't know. I was just thinking about you know this website is free and open source education. You know, I want to help as many people as I can. People like me who doesn't who whose who's family for whatever reason your parents weren't very good teachers and leaders and so rather than let people grow up wild you know i'm just supplying this little and my stories are i'm nobody special i'm a guy that was grew up wild you know you abused drugs and caused all kinds of trouble and i'm trying to improve myself and make amends for some of the harm i caused by helping as many people as i can you know, you find this website, there's, I'm thinking, I haven't counted them, but I'm thinking there's at least more than a hundred stories, you know, and I'm probably getting close to a hundred videos, you know, the, the written story, you know, it's a, it's a, if you read all the stories and watch all the videos on this website, it's going to improve your life. There's no, I believe that, it's not even in my, and it doesn't matter who you are. You know, and my main target audience is people like me who are, you know, if I wish somebody would have told me a few things and I could have done my life different, it would have been a lot better for me. You know, and so I'm trying to help them. That's my target audience. But I don't care how rich you are or how smart you are. Watching these videos and reading these stories will improve your life. And they're just... They're not all that, you know, I don't, I'm just one person making videos on my phone. They're, the stories are not, you know, super duper produced, you know, professional artist produced videos. They're me talking on my phone and then converting them into videos on my computer. And uh, it's fun. I'm having fun doing it. I like doing it. Um, um, you know. I, I didn't do too well in school. I, I, I'm fairly intelligent. I love to read and learn, but I don't really, I didn't get along very well with teachers. They, uh, you know, so I, uh, and yet here I want to, I'm trying to be a teacher. That's kind of really what I'm trying to do is be a teacher. And uh, I guess because I want to teach people right. I don't want to be telling somebody you're too dumb to learn this. You know, or you couldn't, you couldn't have done that. You had to have cheated because there's no way you could have written an article that well. You know, that's what happened to me, man. My English teacher gave us an assignment and, you know, and I wrote an article that I had read about even before I got the assignment, you know, because I, I read this article about the world's deepest oil well. And uh, my... You know, and the next day or, you know, like, because that was on, I think, a Saturday or something. And the next week, Monday, we got 
the assignment to write the article about anything we want to. Just write an article. It can be a book report. It can be whatever you want. So I re wrote an article about that article that I had read this Saturday before. And Friday, I get my article back and I get an F. And I'm going, why did I get an F? She said, there's, there's no way you could have written that art article. You had to have copied it. And so I kind of lost respect for teachers at that point, And I never did very well in school. And I wish, even then, I wish, you know, I would have just went across the hall to the library and got a copy of the National Geographic magazine that I read the article out in at the, because the article, I was at the optometrist, you know, and I read that article while I was waiting. And, um, you know, I could have just walked across the hall and got the article and proved that I didn't, you know, I didn't even know, I never even heard of, uh, what do you call that, plagiarism. I never even heard of that. And so, you know, but I just lost, had a, you know, I've had a, kind of an attitude of contempt for teachers ever since then, but that's a bad attitude, you know. And uh, so teachers are good. I think the schools, you're going to have a room in your house that is the teaching, the school room, and everybody's going to have a, a room. You know, there's certain advantages to having everybody going to school together. You know, that whole socialization factor, is a, it's a good thing. You know, but because of what's going on with the schools, they're corrupt. There's something really weird and corrupt going on in schools. You know, I'm, I'm thinking a lot more people are going to be homeschooled, you know, and you'll buy the curriculum and it will come in and the kids will go in the room and they'll be able to, it'll all be computerized and come over the, you know, I think that's a, a really good alternative. Although, like I said, I think the whole socialization at school is a good thing and we should keep doing that but you know you just have to kind of adapt to what's really going on and pay attention in the parents are the teachers and leaders of the children and they always will be and no school no state nobody has any right to interfere with that you know the family is the you know other than the faith the family is the most important feature of human nature. Civilization depends on families. Families created civilization. And that's what we need to do. Focus on is nurturing our families and taking and making sure they're healthy. And that because that's how we can make sure that's how we're gonna make sure individual human beings are healthy, is by making sure families are healthy. And you know, that's another you know, so but uh, seek the truth. You know, the truth is, it's interesting. It's way more interesting than it's some made up story. You know, watching the news and tr the truth, you know, not so much, the news is kind of depressing because they always focus on bad news, but just seek the truth. You know, National Geographic is great, you know, and, and explore the world. You know, with all this NASA, all this stuff they're doing up in space, you know, it's really cool. You know, robots, they got robots on every planet now, you know, with cameras taking pictures. You know, some of them are just flybys, like they flew by Pluto here a couple of years ago, and now we got pictures of Pluto. And so, you know, it's very interesting and explore what the universe, you know, you figure out, they say that, ha like, all the stars in the in the universe, you know, that we can see, stars and galaxies, are about 25% of the mass of the universe. The other 25, you know, uh, see, when I was ago, no, it's about 20, 23% of the mass of the universe is dark matter, and and 20 and 72% of it is dark energy which leaves 5%. All the stars and galaxies in, in the universe are 5% of the mass of the universe. And I don't know exactly how they measured that, but they can weigh, the, and somehow they figured out some mathematical formula that, uh, so they weigh the universe. And the, so if uh, the dark mass, they can detect it because of like if the galaxies, the, at the rate that they're spinning, you know, just by looking at them, 
with if they had that mass they would fly apart and they don't fly apart which means they're a lot heavier than what we can see and because the gravity is pulling the stars into the you know towards the center of the galaxy and another thing that they can detect you know like if they look at one galaxy and there's a, another galaxy between them the, the, it'll the, the central the one in between will bend the light from the more distant galaxy and they can measure how heavy it is by how much the light bends and you know how they do all that you know it's i don't know how they do that you know that calculus is i tried to study calculus but it's really not very easy you know for me math i'm more of a word person than a math person but anyway so that's how they can tell about the dark energy the way they deter i mean the dark matter the dark energy the way they measure that is is they they somehow determine that the you know the expansion of the universe is accelerating and they calculate okay how much you know in mass energy does it take to produce that rate of acceleration and that's the dark matter dark energy so what I say and to that is that so the, the matter that we can see the stars and galaxies we can see are like the foam floating on top of an ocean of power okay and this you know and basically all it is is kind of like the difference between water and ice you know the matter that we see is just like frozen energy you know and uh, it's because that's matter E equals MC squared means that matter and energy are interchangeable and so this ocean of power learning about that and understanding it and learning how to harness that power is the key to the jump to light speed and being able to jump from one solar system to another you know and how you know i don't know how it happens you know and they're going to be i believe the reason they can make those ufos can make those acute angle turns you know at like 500 g turns is because they produce their own gravity field you know there's a field around the ship that is where the the gra they're producing their own gravity so they're not affected by inertia the gravity or inertia you know and so, so the, you know, and it, and it has to do with that. I don't know how it works, but it's just kind of a, how's it gonna work? You know, how are you gonna be able to go f travel that far and that fast? Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, just, it's just fascinating. You know, nature, natural history is fascinating. Human nature and civilization is fascinating. History, you know, my ancestors, all of our ancestors, you know, the people of Earth, you know, the Egyptians, you know, whoever there was a civilization during the Ice Age, I believe, that was founded by Adam. You know, it started out in Iran, you know, he, he grew, him and the Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden was in Turkey. And when they left, you know, traveled to the east, they went into Iran, and they that's where the first human civilization was produced. And it was global, and they built all these giant rock cities, you know, in Peru and Egypt, you know, even the pyramids and all that were produced by this civilization. And then when the Ice Age ended, and sea level rose and flooded all the big coastal cities, which we now find all around the earth. There's big cities, underwater cities, and we're going, wow, look at this, you know. And so it caused a dark age. And that's when, shortly after that, Noah appears, and he, he was just around the Black Sea. I figure he was on the north shore of it to, to start with, the little inland sea. And then when the water poured in from the Mediterranean and filled up that basin and became the Black Sea, he floated around the ark, in the ark, him and his family, for however many days. And they, the first land they saw was Mount Ararat, because it just towers over the, the land and then they came to shore in turkey again and they they're the they i figure noah and his 
family probably founded Gobekli Tepe and they taught people about agriculture and spirituality and agriculture and they you know civilization started out right there you know and Abraham he lived down there in Yer and after he got throughout you know destroyed all the pagan gods you know they him and his family went up to uh, Haran which there was a city you know they kind of implied it was this big city in Syria but it turns out there's a small town called Haran in Turkey about 40 miles from Gobekli Tepe and I believe that's where Abraham went and uh, you know and he went to school at uh, Gobekli Tepe and then went down and founded the you know, and look, he, Abraham is a, one of the manifestations of God. He didn't really need to go to school. But I'm just saying, there's a connection between Noah and Abraham and Gobekli Tepe. And they went and founded Israel and the whole thing. And all this, those are my ancestors. And, they're, and I'm proud of them. I'm not ashamed of my ancestors. I'm not ashamed of the ones that came up north, even way before that, all that, and they they came up from Africa, and they into Europe, you know, and Russia, and they kind of after they started getting that crowded area, they started spreading out from to the east and the west, and they up, ended up meeting up here in North America, you know, the first, you know, actually the first ones came from Western Europe. And then they got wiped out by an impact event and went extinct. And then the Siberians came in and they became the Native Americans. And then the Western Europeans came again, another wave. And they've just been mixing in, you know, and those are all my ancestors. You know, the Chinese built the Great Wall of China to keep us out of there. And, you know, because they, I don't know, the Chinese are the Chinese. They're our ancestors too. You know, and uh, we need to respect each other, love and respect each other, and you know, submit to God. Submission to God is the key. That's the most important thing of all. Is uh, practice submission to God, seek God, and uh, love and obey God, and submission to God, and follow the rules, the follow the divine rule of law that that God reveals through the manifestation of God. There's always a manifestation of God, and they come every every once in a while, every thousand years or so, a new one comes and reveals the word, of, a, a new revelation of the word of God, and that's how we find God. That's the way God created His. his universe it's everything in the universe is belongs to god you know god the universe all these stars and galaxies they're they're the they're the uh, god's marvels you know all the way i look at it i think you know i don't know but uh and he made them all and there's no doubt that there, there's doubt there's millions of civilizations that it has you know if, once you study and learn how life started on earth it's you know, you, you know that the universe is full of life, man, because it's the same conditions, wherever these conditions exist in the universe, life will begin and it'll grow, you know, because it's just part of the chemistry of Earth. You know, it's part of the chemistry of the universe. So anyway, it's time for me to go to work, man. I, this kind of lasted longer than I was planning, but that's okay. I've kind of got blown through my 15 minute time schedule, but have a great day and peace be with you.